should street art be preserved? It's, it's a really complicated issue. Um, I think there's probably two sides to the story. I think a city that is always clean, that spends huge amount of monies on constantly painting itself gray, is not gonna be a particularly great place to live. On the other hand, graffiti is a living culture and it's about responding to types of graffiti that already exist and responding to the city. So it can't be frozen, it can't be held like some kind of museum piece. I didn't feel sad when the Banksy stencil was defaced. I felt like that was actually an example of um, the city taking part in this conversation. Banksy himself is a, a prankster, a satirist, someone who produces work that actually doesn't last very long. So I'm sure that he was probably having a bit of a chuckle at, uh, at all of the controversy that, uh, that it led to. One of the interesting things about graffiti today is how much it's photographed. People often interact with graffiti by photographing their favorite graffiti. It's almost like photography has become part of graffiti culture. That's the way the work is archived and celebrated and shared, particularly in a digital culture. And in a way that gives the work a longer life beyond the original kind of places that it's put into. I'm standing next to the spot where in 2003, uh, the British graffiti artist Banksy produced a stencil. At that time, Banksy was just at the beginning of becoming internationally famous. Later that year, um, the stencil that he put here, a similar version, appeared on the cover of the British pop band Blur's album, Think Tank. And pretty soon, people became really fascinated by this stencil, which is a picture of a, a someone, small figure in a diving uh, costume. From 2003, Banksy was becoming more and more famous as a, as a graffiti artist, as a stencil artist, and largely because his work was purchased by celebrities and his work was happening across the globe. So it's really significant that Melbourne had its own set of Banksy stencils. And there were some here and some in other laneways in Fitzroy and St Kilda and throughout the city. So when Banksy put this uh, stencil on the wall here, it stayed unrecognised for many years. Often it was hidden behind a, a wheelie bin and only a few people in the city um, knew what it was and knew the significance of the artwork. But as stenciling and graffiti became more popular and had a higher profile in Melbourne, a lot of questions were asked about what to do with this artwork that was becoming both very famous, but also potentially it was worth a lot of money. The owners of this building, the Nicholas Building, decided that they wanted to protect the stencil and a plexiglass sheet was put in place over the little diver with the intention, I think, of giving it some level of, of protection and making sure that it was preserved. Some people felt that this was trying to turn graffiti into mu a museum piece. So there was a bit of a backlash and um, the Banksy stencil was defaced. Silver paint was sprayed or poured behind the plexiglass. Um, and that covered over the, the Banksy stencil. And it did lead to some really interesting debates about how great pieces of graffiti should be responded to. One of the interesting aspects of graffiti is how tied it is to particular places. When you take examples of graffiti and street art and take them out of the streets and into galleries, often they don't really make sense. Their sense comes from the context in which they exist. And the layers of conversation um, that happen around that particular space, how they respond to the spaces of our city. This incident with the Banksy stencil is part of a much broader conversation about street art and graffiti in Melbourne, how people respond to it, how we might protect some aspects of it, and how it exists as part of a very vibrant culture of conversation. So these walls are not they're not static kind of objects. This isn't just an outdoor gallery. It's actually a conversation space. And this particular site has been part of an ongoing conversation. And we can still see here today a whole range of different layers and different marks. You can still see the original Banksy stencil. You can see some other versions that have been put over the top. And even the surrounding walls seem to comment on this question about what is graffiti and how do we respond to it.